This video will cover F-tests for linear restrictions, which enable us to test hypotheses about multiple parameters in a regression analysis. At the end of this video, you should feel comfortable specifying a model appropriate for answering a given policy question, specifying null and alternative hypotheses appropriate for answering a given policy question, identifying a restricted and unrestricted model appropriate for testing a hypothesis involving multiple parameters, and conducting an F-test for a linear restriction. Suppose we'd like to use data to answer the following questions. Are there statistically significant differences in educational attainment across regions of the United States? And if so, are these regional differences explained by urban-rural differences? We'll need to start by selecting an appropriate data set and formulating models that enable us to conduct hypothesis tests that address these questions. Hopefully when you think about differences across regions, dummy variables come to mind. Region is a categorical variable, and the regression coefficients on dummy variables indicating each region tell us about differences across regions. Let's take a look at the NLS-Y dataset in Stata. There are four dummy variables describing mutually exclusive regions of the United States, Northeast, North Central, West, and South. To answer the first question, we could use the variable S for years of education or schooling as a dependent variable and three out of the four region dummy variables as the independent variables. As we have discussed before, we need to omit one category to avoid perfect multicollinearity. The choice is not too important here, but I'll exclude the south. Here is the model and the associated stata command. Let's take a look at the results of this model. As a quick refresher, try interpreting the coefficient on the northeast region dummy variable. Referring back to the model, the beta 2 estimate means that on average, individuals in the Northeast attain 0.37 years of education more than individuals in the South. We compare to the South because it is the omitted category. With this interpretation in mind, think about how to write a hypothesis to answer the first question we posed. Are there statistically significant differences in years of education across regions of the United States? If the answer is no, then beta 2, beta 3, and beta 4 are all zero. Why? Beta 2 equals zero means that there is no difference in average schooling between the northeast and the south. Beta 3 equals zero means there is no difference between the north central region and the south. And beta 4 equals zero means there is no difference between the west and the south. If these regions do not differ from the south, then none of the regions differ from one another. This makes a good null hypothesis, and we can write down a, cons a consistent alternative hypothesis. It may be worth reminding ourselves of the three rules of writing hypotheses. These apply to hypotheses involving multiple parameters in the same way they apply to hy hypotheses about a sing single parameter. First, the null and alternative hypotheses are always about the population. We are making a statement about the parameters or the betas. Second, equality always goes in the null hypothesis. Clearly we have done this. Finally, choose the null and alternative hypotheses so that the result you expect is in the alternative hypothesis, unless they would be inconsistent with rule number two. We have also done this here. If the null hypothesis is false, then there are differences in educational attainment across regions because the alternative hypothesis indicates that at least one region differs from the south. Although we spent a lot of time thinking through these hypotheses, they should look familiar. We are testing whether any of the independent variables have a relationship with the outcome. This is a goodness of fit test. To perform the test, we can turn back to the model results and look at the F statistic or the p-value corresponding to the f-statistic. For example, since the p-value is less than 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis at the 5% significance level. Accordingly, we find evidence that there are differences in educational attainment across regions. Now let's return to the second question. We will see shortly that, like the first question, we can address this question with the hypothesis test on multiple parameters. What would it mean for the regional differences in educational attainment to be explained by urban-rural differences? Perhaps educational attainment differs between urban and rural areas, 
and the differences in schooling across these regions are in fact due to differences in the urban versus rural concentrations across regions. In other words, perhaps region is a proxy for urbanicity. We might think of this as an omitted variable bias problem. Accordingly, one solution would be to add an independent variable describing this omitted factor. The NLSY dataset contains a dummy variable urban equal to 1 if the individual lives in an area classified as urban, and 0 otherwise. Here is a model that includes both the region dummy variables and the new urban variable. Could we conduct a hypothesis test that corresponds to the statement of interest? Think about the following null hypothesis. What does it mean? If beta 2 equals 0, then there is no difference in educational attainment between the northeast and the south, holding urban versus rural constant. In other words, individuals in the northeast and individuals in the south who live in the same type of area, urban or rural, tend to have the same level of education. Similarly, if beta 3 and beta 4 also equal 0, then there are no differences in educational attainment across any of the regions holding urban constant. This matches the question. If there are no differences across regions after we control for urban versus rural, then the urban-rural differences explain the regional differences. Here is the alternative hypothesis that corresponds to the null. Note that we have again written our hypotheses in terms of the population parameters and with equality in the null. However, the statement we are trying to show, that regional differences are explained by urban-rural differences, is in the null, inevitable due to the constraint that the null contains the equalities. Note that one parameter not in our hypothesis is beta 5. Even though our question mentions urban-rural differences, it is not a question about the urban coefficient itself. For instance, to hypothesize that beta 5 equals 0 would mean that educational attainment is the same in urban and rural areas, holding region constant. Our question is not asking this. It is only asking about the region coefficients, that is, the differences across region when urban versus rural is held constant. Now that we have specified our hypotheses, how do we test these? Here are the results of the model. Our attention might naturally shift to the F statistic. After all, we used a statistic last time we wanted to test whether a number of coefficients equaled zero. But this default part of the output has a problem. Recall that we proposed to answer our question by testing whether beta 2, beta 3, and beta 4 are equal to zero. By contrast, a goodness of fit test asks whether the coefficients of all independent variables equal zero. That is, the goodness of fit test includes a statement about beta 5, whereas our question does not. So the goodness of fit test, and therefore the F statistic provided in stata by default, is not applicable here. Fortunately, the F statistic itself is still appropriate for a hypothesis test involving multiple parameters. We call this an F test for a linear restriction for reasons that should become clear in a moment. First, recall the formula for the F statistic. Note that this is the same formula used to compute the statistic for the goodness of fit test. The F statistic compares the residual sum of squares for the unrestricted model, that is the original model that we considered, to the residual sum of squares for the restricted model. The restricted model is what we get when we start with the unrestricted model and assume the null hypothesis. We call it a restricted model because we can think of the null hypothesis as a restriction on the parameters of the original model. The F statistic is relatively large if the restriction increases the residual sum of squares significantly. That is, the difference between the restricted and unrestricted RSS is large. We will return to this intuition after we finish going through the mechanics of this test. To derive the restricted model, we will copy the unrestricted model and then assume the null hypothesis. According to the null hypothesis, beta 2, beta 3, and beta 4 are all 0. This means that the three region dummy variables are now multiplied by 0, so those terms disappear from the model. What is left is the restricted model, that education depends only on the urban dummy variable. We're done with the hardest part. Now we just have to estimate the two models in stata and gather the appropriate information from the output of each. Remember that for each model we need the residual sum of squares and the degrees of freedom.
Here are the results from the original or unrestricted model again. Here is the RSS value. Remember that this is RSS UR since we are looking at the unrestricted model. The model has 1195 degrees of freedom, also equal to the 1200 observations minus the five parameters estimated. This is all we need from the unrestricted model to calculate the F statistic. We need to do the same for the restricted model. Here is the RSS value and the degrees of freedom. This gives us everything we need to calculate the F statistic. Here is all that information in one place with the unrestricted and restricted model values. Plugging in each of these values results in an F statistic of 1.59. As with a goodness of fit test, we need to compare this F statistic to a critical value. Looking up a critical value requires two degrees of freedom value, numerator and denominator. The DF term in the numerator of the equation is 1,198 minus 1,195, or 3, so this is the numerator degrees of freedom. The DF term in the denominator is 1,195, so this is the denominator degrees of freedom. Sometimes the information is recorded like this. 3 is the numerator degrees of freedom, 1195 is the denominator degrees of freedom, and 1.59 is the value of the F statistic. With the degrees of freedom, we can look up the critical value of the F statistic. Using a significance level of 5%, the critical value is 2.61. Since the F statistic is less than F crit, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's take a moment to revisit the intuition behind the F statistic. We calculated a relatively small F statistic, which is primarily due to the fact that RSS decreased only slightly from the restricted to the unrestricted model. Although the RSS should never increase when moving to a less restrictive model, the decrease in RSS, that is, decrease in the sum of squared errors of the model's predictions, was sufficiently minor that we think the restriction could plausibly be true. That is, the data we observed appear consistent with the restricted model, which assumes that the coefficients on the three region dummy variables equal zero. By contrast, if we had calculated a very high F statistic, then a large decrease in RSS would have indicated that the restriction was implausible. That is, would have been unusual to see data so extreme if the restriction specified in the null hypothesis were true. Let's try addressing a different question using an F-test on a restriction. Does the mother's education level have the same influence on an indi individual's education as the father's education level? Think about how we could answer this question using the NLSY dataset. We will need variables for an individual's years of education as well as those of the mother and the father. If we wrote an individual's education as being dependent on the mother's and father's education, how would we test whether the influence of the mother's and father's education is the same? If beta 2 equals beta 3, then a one-year increase in the mother's education has the same effect on the individual's education as a one-year increase in the father's education. So this null hypothesis corresponds to a yes answer to the question. Here is the analogous alternative hypothesis. Armed with a model and a set of hypotheses, we can now derive a restricted model. St starting with the unrestricted model, assume the null hypothesis. Since beta 2 and beta 3 are equal to one another, we can replace beta 2 with beta 3. We could have also replaced beta 3 with beta 2 and ended up with an equivalent model. We can simplify this model by collecting the common beta 3 terms resulting in the restricted model. Unlike the previous F-test we considered, note that the null hypothesis here does not set any of the parameters equal to zero. Accordingly, none of the variables have disappeared from the restricted model. Instead, the restricted model now has a new independent variable not present in the unrestricted model. That new variable, which may seem rather unintuitive, is the sum of the mother's and father's education levels. We can estimate this restricted model in Stata by creating a new variable to match the model. For instance, if we called the variable s parents, we could generate the new variable as follows, and then regress the individual's education on the new variable.
we can then proceed to use the F statistic formula. Let's take a quick look at the model output to gather the needed information. In the unrestricted model, here is the RSS and the degrees of freedom. Similarly, in the restricted model, here is the RSS and the degrees of freedom. Bringing this information together, we can calculate the F statistic, identify the degrees of freedom from the appropriate parts of the formula, and look up the critical value. The F statistic is far less than the critical value, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Accordingly, the data are consistent with the mother's and father's educational attainment having the same influence on an individual's education. It may be worth one more look at the unrestricted model. Recall that we wanted to test whether the population coefficients on the SM and SF variables were equal. A quick look at the two estimated values of these coefficients reveal that they are quite similar in magnitude. While this output alone is insufficient to conduct the hypothesis test, examining the estimates in the unrestricted model can often help us predict the outcome of the hypothesis test. In fact, inspecting the coefficients carefully may help you to identify patterns that you would like to test by developing hypotheses and deriving a new restricted model.